What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. It's still super wet around here, but I think today we're gonna finally be able to get some of these warm season cover crops planted. It's been tough around here. Uh, Brooklyn has got the soil ready several times and then it's like if you don't plant it right then, then you're gonna get a heavy rain and it's gonna pack it down again and, and it's tough. You saw- I, um, sorry, I didn't know that was an issue. I would have I would have checked the weather each time before I put so much effort into it. Well, the weather hasn't been super accurate well, either. It's like I just 18, didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> evidently, 18% uh, chance of rain means it's going to flood. 100% chance of yeah. rain. Yeah, it's going to flood for an hour and a half. You're going to get three inches. So Hope still been cool. raining every day, at least a little bit every day. <laughs> have uh, we ever had this? Uh, I don't ever remember having this much. I mean, we shouldn't complain. We've been in a drought for so I, long. I've seen but. it happen in the spring, but. Rarely I've seen it happen that in I can summer. remember in the middle of summer like this down here. It has not cooled it off like I expected either. But it has, I mean. It's still hot. It, usually this time of year it can easily be 95 to 98 degrees. And I think the hottest we've gotten so far is 91. Feels but like 99. The humidity is, is, <laughs> is rough. Yeah. It's like you're rough. cutting through a fog. You're like, yeah. So several videos ago, we planted some buckwheat where we had our sweet corn there. So here's the buckwheat cover crop we planted several videos ago. Didn't get as good a stand as I would have liked, but we weren't able to rake it in that well and got some really heavy rains after we planted it. Some of it washed down that hill there, but we've got some vegetation there. And I don't know if we'll let that go to full flower. We got some pumpkins we want to plant and we kind of want those to be ready. I don't know if they'll be ready for Halloween, but at least- Hoping they will be. Uh, between Halloween and-, and um, Before th Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people around here like to use them for fall decorating. So uh, we probably will, I don't know if we'll ditch all that buckwheat, but at least like cultivate a few lanes there where we can plant uh, okay. those three varieties of pumpkins we got. I'll tell you more about that on a future video but yesterday my buddy brought some of his workers in here and got some of these plots ready some of them had to be tilled up some of them didn't and uh, we're ready to plant some more warm season cover crops today as i told you on a previous video we're not doing a lot of fall replanting around here we had a really good spring we got lots of dry so we got lots of potatoes we got pumpkins uh, we got lots of stuff in the freezer. Yeah. Uh, we canned a good bit of stuff. So we really don't need to grow a whole lot of more warm season crops. I do have that glass gym corn. I'm going to plant three rows or so of that. Uh, just okay. something fun to grow. But we're not doing a lot of fall warm season crops like we normally do. So any space we have that's bare right now is about to get a warm season cover crop, which will occupy that area from... Uh, let's say August, September, and then October is the ideal time right here to plant cool season cover crops. So if that plot where the warm season cover crop is, is not going to get any fall cool season vegetables, we'll cut it down, till it, tarp it, whatever way we decide to extinguish that cover crop and then turn around and plant a cool season cover crop there okay. that will last throughout the winter. So that's kind of our game plan. I learn our game plan at the same time we do these videos. Yeah, that's good though. <laughs> I know, I'm always surprised. I'm like, oh, plant You don't have to go back and watch the video because you're, uh, you're I'm in it, I get it. it. All right, that's what we're doing. So I've got my handy dandy book here that I can share. I'll put a link to this below. This comes from Green Cover Seed, which is where I got all my cover crop seeds. I'll put a link to this below. You can request one of these plethora of information in here. Mm -hmm. So as we're planting these, I'll kind of go in a little more detail about each one, but we're going to be putting safflower in one plot, one plot we're going to be doing soybeans, and then one plot we're going to be doing a combination of sorghum sedan grass and red ripper peas. Okay. The all, there's so many good options as far as warm season cover crops. The only one I don't like to grow, and it's not because it's not a good one, is sun hemp. It's, uh, it's tough to take down. It gets real woody. You need a big tractor, mower, rotary mower, bush hog, whatever you want to call it, to take that stuff down. But it does make some awesome ground cover and it's a really good warm season cover crop. It just doesn't fit 
kind of my program around here and the equipment I have. So uh, the ones we're gonna be planting today are all ones that I can take down with my Gravely zero turn mower and when we can either till them in yeah. or tarp it to extinguish right. those cover crops. So let's go out in the garden and let's get started. So the first spot we're gonna be cover cropping is this area over here to the left of our little three row heirloom oak tree trial which is going okay considering how wet it's been. Had a few seeds wash away uh, that didn't get germinated, but considering what we're dealing with, we got a decent stand there. We've got this whole space here. A buddy tilled this for me yesterday. There's still a little bit of grass and some volunteer peas in there. I'd like it to be a little cleaner usually, but it is what it is, we'll deal with it. The soil's nice and soft there. So it should give us some good germination. You should be able to rake in these seeds pretty well. So in this spot, we're gonna plant safflower, which is a cover crop I've never grown before. And there's a nice little paragraph about safflower in my green cover soil health resource guide here. This stuff, normal safflower evidently gets really prickly as it gets older, which makes it not a good forage crop. A lot of people do use these cover crops as forage as well, so they might grow them out. It helps their soil, and then they'll turn some animals loose, chickens, goats, whatever in there. They eat it down, and then they get the manure addition to their soil as well. I do eventually want to get some more chickens and do some of that, just not quite ready for that yet. The safflower is a broadleaf cover crop, similar to uh, buckwheat, sunflowers, things like that. The one thing that's really interesting to me about safflower is that it supposedly can put roots eight to 10 feet down in the soil, which does a lot of good things for your soil. It's gonna open up a lot of water channels down there, help your soil drain better if that's an issue for you. The other big thing, anytime a cover crop puts long, long roots down is you're getting what we call nutrient scavenging. So they're scavenging nutrients from way down deep that your vegetable plants otherwise wouldn't be able to access. And then when you incorporate that cover crop, those nutrients are kind of brought to the surface so they're available for your next round of vegetables or whatever else you're planting there. So really excited about trying this safflower. The variety we're trying is called baldy safflower. safflower. And the baldy portion means that it's not spineless. So this one could be grazed, could be used for livestock. I guess you could harvest. Some people make safflower oil. We'll see what happens there if we're able to harvest anything to make any safflower oil. But this particular baldy variety doesn't get spine, spiny. And so you can use it for grazing. It's supposed to be really good for grazing, actually. So here's what those safflower seeds look like. They look like a white tiny sunflower seed. So it should be really easy to broadcast out there. And in my book here, it tells us that safflower gets to a mature height of 40 inches, needs a minimum soil temperature of 42 degrees to germinate. And it also can withstand some bit of a frost. It doesn't winter kill unless it gets down to 24 degrees. So you could plant this, if you live in an area where it doesn't get super cold you could plant this later in fall and it might make it throughout the winter as long as you don't get down below 24 degrees so i've got a bucket full here probably 10 pounds or so and we're going to liberally scatter this over this plot here so now brooklyn's taking the rake and just lightly combing over it to get some of these seeds covered up here and that gives us a little better germination on our safflower. So some people will say that you don't need to rake this in. You can just put it on top of the soil and it'll germinate just fine. Last year I did some testing with some various cover crop planting techniques and how well the soil was cultivated and all that. So one thing I want to see is does the seed germinate? Do I get a better stand if I till it beforehand or if I just wheel hook beforehand or if I don't do anything, just throw it on top of compacted soil? And throwing it on top of compacted soil, I didn't get very good germination at all. 
wheel hoe in it, get a little better germination. And I get the best stand of cover crop if it is tilled beforehand. I know that doesn't fit with everybody's equipment they have or everybody's gardening style, but from my experiences, you get a better cover crop stand that way. Now with our no-till plot that we'll do in a little bit, obviously we're not tilling there, so we won't have softer soil to work with there. I also tested raking it in versus not raking it in and I always get a much better stand from raking it in. So the reason we do it this way is because we've done some experimentation and for us, fluffy soil, raking it in always gives us a better cover crop stand. All right, Brooklyn got it raked in. You got the hang of it now? Yeah. I've learned through this that like Travis does it one way, but I think he does it one way because like he's stronger up here than I am and then I do it another way. So it's always funny to see. <laughs> The way it's a lot I easier. It's a lot easier when that soil's a little fluffy, ain't it? Oh yeah. I thought it was gonna be like over here when you made me rake in that buckwheat and I had 50 million corn stalks in my way. That was yeah. a lot harder. Yeah. A lot easier in some nice fluffy soil. Nice fluffy soil though. Yeah. Okay, let's head over to the dream garden and knock out these other two plots. So our no-till plot here, obviously we didn't till this. Those guys just kind of raked out that pumpkin debris. There are a few little weeds in there they got out of there. And since it's mostly just a pretty thick layer of compost, this stuff's really nice and fluffy. No need to till it, should get pretty good germination. Now I was just gonna plant soybeans here, but I've got some of this saf out, saf flour left in my bucket and it's kind of hard to pour it back into the bag. So I think we'll just plant saf flour and soybeans. Okay. It's always good if you can to plant a diversity of cover crops. A green cover seed has a lot of good mixtures that you can grow. Uh, so anytime you can increase the diversity, you get oh. a diversity of huh. uh, soil biology, soil life there because you got all the different plants. So, so you're mixing the two different cover crops together. Or are you well, gonna I'm throw gonna, them out separately? I, I'm gonna throw them uh, separately. Why, does it matter? Does it really matter? Well, because the peas, we need to inoculate. The, the soybeans, oh, okay. we're gonna inoculate okay. those with the little slurry. Okay. And these are not a legume, so we're not okay. gonna inoculate these. But if they were both dry, you could throw them out together. Right, yeah, you could certainly. I would, okay. I would only recommend doing that if they were kind of equal size. Sometimes if you got real tiny seeds and real big seeds, you get a disproportionate amount of one or the other. So oh, sometimes Lord. I like to throw them separate. Okay. Now with, over there, we didn't, we just planted the south flower by itself because I want to see how it does by itself. But okay. we're going to do a mixture here, just an experiment and try something. Did you have some questions? I have some questions. I have all the questions. Um, so I see there's stuff left in this plot and you just got it out as best you could. Like that's not a big deal to you. Right, right. right. There's a little bit of stubble in there. Now if it was me in full strength, I would have these probably really, really clean. <laughs> but you've had to lower your I'm perfection I'm a little, scale down. I'm a little OCD about it, but. We, um, we've worked on this. <laughs> it's been a point of the back injury. We've had to say, we've got to lower our expectations of yeah. perfection. So we're lowering our expectations a little bit, right? But, it, but it's probably not going to be a huge deal. No, no, right? it shouldn't be a huge deal. Because there was some weeds out in the other garden, and I thought you were going to like have a spaz attack and make me get them all out, but no. you didn't. Uh, no, you I'm just, just dealing with it okay. right now. You're dealing just dealing with it. But in an ideal world, you would have pulled all this out. Yeah, in an ideal world, yeah, I would have had it super, super clean. Okay. Yeah, that's just me. It may not matter. <laughs> For the rest of you gardeners who are fine with a few weeds, right. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, got it. Got it? Any yeah, other questions? I, not, not right now. I'm sure some will pop okay, up. Okay, so let's throw this sapphire real quick, and then I'm going to show you how we inoculate those soybeans, and then we get those out there too, and then we'll rake them all in one time. I've seen something. Forever change the game. So as far as the soybean variety that we're planting, they have a paragraph about that in the soil health resource guide as well. It's a variety called 5518 or 5518 soybeans. It was developed by Kansas State University in 2018. Hard to find non-GMO soybeans out there, but this is a non-GMO variety. And hopefully we can eat some of these as well. Before we scatter them out here, anytime we're planting any legume as a cover crop, now I like to inoculate them. So let's do that real quick. I'll show you how we do that. All right, so we got our soybeans right here. You see those nice round seeds. If you had a 
I want to do this with a mechanical planter or a seed drill, those would work really great because they're all pretty uniform and round. We're going to add some of this slurry inoculant here. The uh, granular stuff is not necessarily feasible for a cover crop situation because uh, you need so much of it. So use the slurry when we're doing a cover crop. And you know me, I'm not super exact on measuring stuff. You really can't overdo it with this stuff. So I got some water in my cup here. Pour some of this in there. I'm going to mix it around enough. Enough is how much I pour. I know, you know, I want, but like fourth of a bag? Yeah, probably something like that. Fourth of a bag. Nice. I like that stirring stick. That's fancy. Yeah, I'm going to have to use my hand. Ooh. There we go. Get nice and dirty with it. And the only trick to this right here is you want to plant this stuff right as soon as you put this inoculant on it. So that bacteria can get in the soil there. So we're going to pour this on our beans. You put me a little bit of water in there sure. so I can get the rest of that. And we're just going to mix it around. Get them nice and coated. You can see all that inoculant on there. I think this is enough, honey. There's really no such thing as too much inoculant, but those appear to be coated really, really well. And uh, that's the inoculant I'm using, this Exceed Peat right there. All right, so let's go put these seeds out here and Brooklyn's gonna rake them in for us. Live it up, settle it, go up the pedal, there's too much here. Let these towers turn to rivers, let these instincts steer. Let the dust settle, let the stormy weather ride out disappear. When the sunlight shines, let it all come clear. So this no-till plot here looks really nice and even. It's raking in really, really good. If you don't get all the seeds covered, it's not a big deal. But we just like to kind of rake it over the best we can. And when I started this no-till experiment, I was kind of worried about the crop turnover. How are we going to do crop turnover if we can't really cultivate the soil? But it's been super easy because the soil is so soft, it's just a lot easier to turn over. And with going from pumpkins to this cover crop, it has been super, super easy. Less effort than on our other plots that we do till. Now over here where our watermelons were, we did have to till this had one of those guys trying to wheel hoe it and he just wasn't strong enough to kind of cut through some of this grass and watermelon vines but they got cleaned up okay there's still some junk out there but we're just gonna have to be okay with that this time but this is where we're gonna be putting sorghum sedan grass and red ripper peas so i got my sorghum sedan grass right here these seeds are a Tiny. bit smaller yeah than a pea seed and of all the warm season cover crops I have grown before, this one is my favorite just because hmm. it's the most manageable, it's the most, the easiest to take down. Um, you can grow this a couple different ways. A lot of times if I'm planting just sorghum sedan grass, I won't let it get on up to five or six foot tall, which it will. If you don't have a big lawnmower that can take down something that's five or six foot tall, maybe you just have a push mower or just a weed eater, this stuff right here can be continually mowed and it will keep coming back. So oh, what you can do, good tip. I'm sweat my eyes. <laughs> what you can do I sweat everywhere. is when it gets, I don't know, two foot tall or so, three foot tall, you can go in there and mow it just on whatever your high setting of your mower is. And then you'll drop all that good biomass on the soil to give you some additional weed suppression and it'll grow back and you can usually mow it huh. three, four, sometimes five times. So I have done How that. How often are you mowing it? Just when it gets back to that two foot high. I know, but how long is it taking to get that back there? Oh, it just depends on how oh, much rain and weather you're getting. But I would say every <laughs> every two to three weeks or so. Oh, okay. So it's not every week. No, no, not every right. week. Not like cutting your yard or anything. Okay. But you can just let it get really big. And, and in this situation, we're not going to mow it because we're going to be planting these red ripper peas, which is a climbing field pea variety. We're going to plant those with it in the hopes that these peas climbs on the sorghum sedan grass what? and we get a nice big foliage because when i planted 
iron clay peas or regular field peas with sorghum sedan grass in the past the field peas do really well at first they kind of outpace the sorghum and then the sorghum grows above the field peas and eventually shades them out so hopefully uh -huh. in this situation they kind of grow together and the field peas climb on the sorghum i don't know if this is going to work yeah but we're going to see seems like a theory for sure uh it's going to be a nice little <laughs> experiment to try so i'm gonna get the sorghum out here first then we'll inoculate those red ripper peas and get those out there too you're not picking these peas though right you can eat these this is a cow pea variety that you can eat but we i we've got so many peas in the freezer we, we aren't picking them. uh we probably won't pick them okay. you can pick them they are okay. good to eat you can grow these just as a food crop the red ripper peas okay on a trellis or arch trellis or netting trellis whatever uh we grew some actually the first year we garden here we grew some huh. that's a blur uh, to me I don't yeah remember. it's been a long time ago but you can grow them as a food crop we'll probably just when they start flowering we'll probably extinguish this whole thing so okay let's get them planted all right all right all right we got her did how you feeling i have a workplace injury uh-oh got a blister uh -oh. hands. i know it's getting humid out here <laughs> real humid good to get that done uh got a couple more things we want to do on this video our cucumbers are supremo cucumbers brooklyn just picked them while i was throwing some of that seed and they haven't been picking in several days and you didn't get a whole lot did you not near as much as i normally get yeah. no they're done which tells me they're on the way out so yeah. we're going to get those up we'll show you how easy it is to take that down and brooklyn's got a new nifty tool i bought her that she wants to uh, show you how to use i can't wait <laughs> So, all we need to do this is some pruners, and then she'll show you that neat little tool. <laughs> you gotta peck me in the eye with these things. <laughs> so these things may not look super terrible, but they're just declined in production. So, yeah. first thing we need to do here is cut these zip ties. So we'll just cut those all the way down. And usually when you do this, you don't have to pull up the plants. When you pull that trellis, they all kind of come up. We'll see how it goes here. We just cut our zip ties. And then all the plants and everything is on that netting and we'll pull that netting out here to the grass let all that plant material dry and then we can just throw it in the trash you could save it but at a quarter a foot i don't really find that it's worth saving there you go just pulls it all up at one time now grab it closer to where the plants are And just kind of roll it, roll it in the ball. There we go. We got a little bit of plant debris left there, but not a lot. You can see how easy that is to remove a crop of cucumbers. Now these T-posts here, when I'm at full strength, I can usually wiggle them out of there. It isn't always easy. If it's really, really dry, they're tough to get out. If it's really, really wet like it is now, it's like a suction down there and they're tough to get out but we just got a neat little nifty tool that gets these things out of the ground super fast honey so you're going to demonstrate i think i'm trying to remember hold on i gotta get it up a little bit it's kind of hard to figure out exactly where to put this so it'll work there it goes I think I can, yeah. Okay. And how much energy does that require? Oh, uh, hardly any. It's real. It's not. I'm not pushing on it hard. If you have to push on it hard, you're doing. You got to readjust it. So you're saying anybody could do it? Yes. Another thing is, don't. The first time I used it, I was letting it go all the way down. Don't do that because it can snap back and smush your fingers. So you just do it like you're pumping. I don't know water. This is how I imagine pumping water would be. <laughs> can pick it up. That dirt's kind of soft. So Very the, soft. The so plate doesn't on. stay in place that well. Right. It's a little tough. It was easier over the tomatoes. There. Yeah. Those are eight foot tall posts too. Those are big ones. Oh, sorry. Should have given me a few times to try this before you did it on video. You got it now. Look at that one. 
Yeah, now see that's super easy. Coming right up. See the ground's not so soft right here, and so the plate stays in place. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So if you do a lot of vertical growing with T-post in your garden, this here is the best $40 you'll ever spend. I don't know <laughs> why we waited till now. This is not a new invention or anything. Did you not know it existed? I did. I just didn't huh. ever realize it was so useful and required so much little, less effort than shaking them and pull them out. You know, I try to yeah. be a tough guy mm -hmm. and pull them out by hand. Mm -hmm. But this right here is so much easier. So I got this one at Tractor Supply. But there was only one there, and obviously I got the last one, so I don't know that they stock a lot of them. But we do, uh, we did find it on Amazon, so I'll put our Amazon affiliate link for this below. Okay. Uh, you can grab one of those. I think they have them on Prime. But really, really good investment here. Yeah. They may be a little bit more on Amazon, but you know, then you don't have to go to the store. So yeah, that's that. So nice, quick cucumber clean up there. Glad to get those cover crops planted. If hope, well, I won't say hopefully because we don't really need any more rain. But if we get some rain today, I won't really water those in. If we don't, we'll put a tripod on them and water them in. For how long? How uh, long do you water them for? If, if there's no rain, I'll do an hour a day for about three days, and usually okay. they're up by then when it's real okay. hot. So uh, glad to get those in. That's going to kind of give us a little bit of a break. Oh, now yeah? that we got that done, we really right. don't have a whole lot of food growing right now in the garden. Yeah, we don't. We don't, this time of year, there's not much you can grow. We got peppers producing, we got okra producing, and then we've got sweet potatoes growing. They'll be ready to harvest in another month or two. Uh, we got Brooklyn's knucklehole peas. They're mm -hmm. looking pretty good. We'll show you those on the garden tour in the next video. And we've got our popcorn that's just kind of waiting to dry out on the plants. So the whole, not a whole lot of food growing and we don't grow a whole lot of food in August and September. It's kind of our break time. Yeah, so we got so those downtime. cover crops in. We'll start thinking about fall cool season stuff within the next month. Um, and we'll have some videos coming up on that. A lot of people yeah. have a lot of questions about, well, what do you start planning for your fall garden? What are you gonna do? And I know you've already said it, sort of so much depends on where you live and when you start. Yeah, so coming up on next, I don't know if it'll be the next video, but uh, within the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about what cool season crops we're gonna try to plant for fall, talk about our greenhouse that we're hopefully gonna get. Ooh. Um, talk about when we're Dropped gonna start ball. some of this stuff. We'll talk about, uh, I'll show you the seeds. I've, I've actually already ordered most of the seeds. I'll show you the seeds and the varieties we got. Uh, Brooklyn. Seeds and varieties for uh, the for fall. fall. For fall. the cool season stuff. Cool season crops are my favorite. Yeah. Fall's a fun time to garden, especially Best once time. it cools off. Woo, maybe that's why it's my favorite. So much cooler <laughs> out here. So Brooklyn's about to get a much needed break this week. She's uh so this this <laughs> week after this video, it'll be mostly me on the videos. Uh she's taking a little trip to Disney World with some girlfriends. Just girls, y'all. If you have not done Disney World, only adults, you are missing Disney World. I love Disney World any shape or form, but especially just adults. Sorry. Our children are going in a few months. We're all going for a week. Yeah. Which so you great. get a break, which you I'm very so well deserve. Thank you for saying that. And uh, <laughs> that'll be nice. And for the rest of the videos this week, we'll probably do a garden tour. And who knows what we'll have for Friday. <laughs> but y'all stay tuned for that. It'll be things that you cannot, only things that are like reachable hey, level. I may, I may recruit some help out here. I may, may find a, a, a buddy that can stand oh, in for you. Oh, that would be nice. Uh, we'll see. We'll Little see. guest appearance. We'll see. Uh, but if you've ever tried any of these cover crops or cover crop mixtures we tried today, let me know how they work for you or if you're planning on trying them or if you have any cover crop, cover crop questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer for you. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like and share and we'll <laughs> see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. By the beauty of your life